Hi there, and welcome to Basically Long Arm Quilting, featuring the Anova Autopilot Mach 3. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at mask without using continuous sew. In the previous episode, we looked at mask with continuous sew. It has everything to do with the patterns that you're using. And without continuous sew's episode today, we are going to be using a pattern that stitches from left to right, as opposed to into the center and back out again. Because I wanted to show you the differences between the two because they make a huge difference on how the system reads the overstitching in the pattern. So let's take a look. All right, so this block that we're gonna be working with uh, today has an applique in the center um, with some ins and outs, maybe more of an irregular applique. So you can use the mask feature for this as well, but for certain patterns, let's say maybe I wanna do a meander that stitches back and forth um, like this as opposed to into the center and back out again, might have a lot of overstitching around to get to the next piece of the pattern as it stitches from left to right. So in mask, you can turn off a feature that stops it from doing continuous sew and it just ties off and jumps to the next section, which depending on the background pattern that you're wanting to use, may be better fit for that. So what we're going to do is start out by first by drawing a boundary around our uh, navy block right here. So I'm gonna go to the computer screen and I'm gonna click on boundary. And I know I want to do a smaller margin on this, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to my good old tenth of an inch margin so I can be prepared for it, just like it is. And I'm going to do my input of sew head and then morph to fit as usual. So I'm going to start back on my quilt around the top left of the block, and I'm going to use my right handle button, take a click there, drop down to the lower left of the block, click there, lower right, click there, and then upper right. Remember, boundaries are only four clicks. And back on the screen, you'll see that we have um, this gray boundary box that it's given us. And I'm going to go look for the pattern that I want to use for my background. So I'm gonna go to pattern library, and I want to use a meander pattern. And I'm going to choose my meandering one. So I'm gonna add that, double left click, it'll put it on your pattern pad. Go ahead and close this, and I can just drag and drop my meandering pattern into place. So from here, I can go back to my transform tool, and you'll see that my starting point and my ending point are a little far away from the side of the block or the ditch. So what I can do is I can actually go into nodes, and I can drag this over to where it gets to where it needs to be. So I'm gonna select the pattern, I'm going to go into my draw text feature, this little pencil with ABC, and that's what gets me into nodes. And I can grab my starting node and drag it over, just like so. Now, what you can see is this pattern is based, its nodes are straight line nodes. Um, if I want to give this more of an arc for it to look a little bit more natural as opposed to this straight dart of a line, I can right click on the line in between these two nodes and change it to arc and then I can grab my blue circle and arc it naturally so it looks more natural like it's going into the pattern as opposed to that straight line. So we've got that one there. We can hop over here, grab the same thing over here. So if we make that a little bit more exaggerated so you can see it again, right click, arc, and now you have a natural arc going out where it lands in the ditch of the block instead of in the center of the block like it is. So I can hop out of this by going back to my transform tool and we're back to there. So I wanna go into mask so I can create a region. So I'm gonna go into mask. I have sew head as my input and I'm gonna create a region for this one. In the previous episode, we did a build because we already had something on the screen, but I wanna show you how you can create within the masking tool. So we're gonna click on create region and we're gonna head back over to our quilt and I'm going to start wherever I'd like to. I'm going to start probably here at the top left section or the top northern section of this applique. And what I'm going to do is use my right handle button again. And I'm just going to click points all the way around this applique that I have. 
And whenever you're doing a mask, um, it all, always is better to do uh, more clicks than not enough just to be 100% accurate with it. So you work all the way around this. And once you get really comfortable with the masking tool and placing uh, points, you'll get a little bit faster with it. Um, don't beat yourself up if you're a little slow working around it. It's, it, you know, it's, it's perfectly okay as you work around this. So we're going to get to here. And once I do my last point, I'm going to head back to my screen. And now that I have that um, region created, I'm going to complete the region. It's going to um, highlight it, and I will select the region. It's going to turn red. I will select the pattern. And if I scroll down, continuous sew is on, and this pattern stitches from left to right, so it might create a bunch of overstitching. So what we'll do is we'll turn off continuous sew. We still want to apply the mask inside. We want to mask away what's inside this portion so it doesn't stitch over our applique. I can click on accept, and then I can click on my transform tool. And now you can see you have little jump lines around here where it's going to be stitching. So it won't continuously sew around and create unnecessary overstitching for this type of pattern. Um, we can look at how it's going to stitch. If we come down here to sew options, you see you have a bunch of jump lines, but that also helps alleviate overstitching if it were to happen. Um, and you can watch your sewing preview there if you would like. So I'm going to close out of this. I see a, a, a harsh straight line here that I want to go ahead and fix too since we're here looking at nodes. Hop into your draw text again. And what we can do is you have extra nodes on this harsh line that we don't really need because we want to turn this into more of an arc. So if I scroll down on the right hand side to the bottom, I have an option for delete points. I can click on delete points and I can left click on these nodes to get rid of them. Make sure you turn off delete points and then you can right click and you can turn it into an arc or a curve, however you naturally would like it to be um, to work around whatever part of that piece that you would like. So just another little uh, piece there to work with. So we could even delete a few extra of these if we wanted to. Let's come into delete. We can get rid of a few of these so we can get it into a nice arc into this section. So let's delete all the way down to there. Undelete, turn off delete, right click, arc, nice natural arc coming into that section there. Just like so. So we're going to save our project. We'll do file, save project, and then we can click go. Once you see continue, you can click on continue, and then you can move back over with your machine. It's going to give you a preview of what it's going to stitch. So you can go ahead and take a single stitch, pull up your thread, hold it nice and taut, press continue. And it's going to stitch around its first little section that it's going to do. going to tie off. It's going to allow me to pull up my threads if I'd like, or you can just cut them um, at the end. I'm also going to turn off my laser light again so you have a better visual of what's happening. Um, you could just hit continue if you wanted to, uh, and you can trim your threads away later. So it'll move over a little bit to where it needs to go to next. You can hit continue once more. It'll do its tie offs again and be on its way. Just continue and continue. Um, having continuous sew off requires you to babysit it just a little bit more, but it would help, again, alleviate the amount of overstitching that you would have on a pattern um, like this one that stitches left and right and left and right. So it's off to that side there. I'm gonna tap continue on my screen. It's just gonna jump to where it wants to go to next. And hit continue again, and it's on its way. All righty, we're coming around to the last little portion that we have here. It's going to finish it off, and as, I've, as it's been stitching, I've been working around 
um, and trimming these little jump stitches that it's left. Remember that if you have jump stitches on top, you'll also have them underneath the quilt. So whenever you're done, uh, make sure you flip the quilt over and trim away these jump stitches that appear. So we can take this last one, push the machine away, come back to where it stopped, take a single stitch, pull up our thread, trim away, and just like that, have that beautiful block created just like so. Thank you so much for joining me today and learning a little bit more about how mask without continuous sew works with these left to right patterns that we have in our arsenal. I'll see you next time on Basically Long Arm Quilting. <laughs>